Hey YouTube, welcome to this installment of the Avion blog. So today on the Avion blog we've got a bit of a budget multimeter for those of you out there who don't have the money to buy something such as a Fluke or the likes. So today we're going to take a look at one of the cheaper options. Um, it is from a company called Major Tech in South Africa. They're known as other things overseas, but here in South Africa, Major Tech. They claim this to be a 25 year special edition multimeter and it is the MT. 25 um, digital multimeter from major tech uh, quite a nice looking package to say uh, most of it and just looking at the function and the range specifications for this meter um, it says yeah the dc voltage is 600 volts ac voltage 600 volts current 10 amps ac and dc 40 mega ohms resistance temperature from negative 20 to 760 degrees celsius capacitance up to 4000 microfarads Frequency 50 to 60 hertz, bandwidth 45 hertz to 1 kilohertz, duty cycle 0.1 to 99.9%, input impedance 10 mega ohms, runs on three 1.5 AAA batteries, uh, the weight of the meter is 318 grams. Okay, now in the past I've enjoyed some of the major techs. But I never really got along with their more professional line. I preferred the MT24 series. It was more compact, gave a lot of functionality, and it was nice and small to carry with you. The professional series was all right. It, it worked pretty well for what it is. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy them specifically. But then when I came across this small little box, I thought this might be worth a look see because what do we see here? It is Cat3 600 volts. But the thing that I'm interested in checking out, IP67. So they claim this to be IP67 dust and waterproof with impact protection, etc. But um, there's the logo there. But we're going to take a look at the meter and see what we think of it. So let's get down onto the bench and take a close look and do an unboxing of this multimeter. Right, so onto the bench when you see the nice little small packaging with some of the specs etc on the side of the box that's pretty much what the meter looks like a bit of a story of major tech here and of this meter um, it looks quite interesting some more information about it it comes with a soft carry case a set of MT810 test leads an MT660 temperature probe instruction manual and it comes with three times triple a 1.5 volt batteries so let's get inside the box and take a look okay inside the box everything appears to be inside this nice small little pouch over here as you can see it is quite compact um, which is really nice for transporting a small little strap over here so you can either use a carabine or something and hook it onto your bag and then when you open up you have the compact meter um, it comes with one of these dust plugs or waterproof plugs whatever you want to call them for sealing it in the bag um, I'll talk about the meter in a few minutes uh, but so far it looks quite interesting uh, you get your set of test leads uh, IP67 waterproof ones your temperature probe and of course your adapter for your temperature probe and there's your manual so let's put that aside and take a look at the meter itself now uh, and see what we think of it okay so on first thought um, meters a bit thicker than the original MT24 MT2322 series uh, but it is more or less the same size now a few of the things I didn't like about those is like lack of bar graphs on the MT22s etc but in so saying this meter feels very firm and robust uh, it's got this sort of integrated rubber holster which is quite nice and it's also got some rubber holstering integrated rubber protection here on the rotary switch the switch itself isn't fully recessed but it isn't doesn't stick out a whole lot um, you've got the like I say the water resistance plug over here which helps you seal up the meter uh, when you've got the leads in and then you've got your range selection so let's turn it on and take a look at the display see if we can get in a bit closer over here Right there we've got the display. I've still got the plastic on it, but we're going to see what it's all about. So on the meter itself, before we do that, you'll see you've got your amps DC, amps AC, 10 amps. 
Um, then you've got your volts, DC, AC, Hertz, percentage, assumed duty cycle, ohms, diode, uh, continuity and capacitor, and then you've got your temperature. So it's a very basic meter, but it covers most of what you would need to look at. So let's switch it on to volts and have a look and see. Oh, before we go again, we've got a mode switch, min, max, torch, and backlight. So here we go. Switching it on to volts. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a analog bar graph that I spotted down the bottom there. Let's go back and put that again. And there you go. Yes, we do have an analog bar graph. And we do have a 4000 count display, which is quite nice. It does default to AC, leaning this meter more towards your electrician than your electronics work, which is fine. I have no problems with that. And then you'd have to push the second function mode button over here to get it into DC mode. I do see some floating voltage over there, but that could stabilize. I don't know if it's made like that or it is coming down. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then of course you've got your Hertz. I'm uh, just trying to see, yep, it does say Hertz on the display. And if you go mode, you've got your percentage duty cycle. And here you've got your resistance, your diode test, your continuity, capacitance. Um, I don't like that everything's all bunched up onto the mode switch in one section, but I mean, it's not terrible. And then you've got your temperature, degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius. So not bad, not too shabby. I don't like that it defaults to AC, but again, leaning more towards your electrician than your electronics technician. But I must comment, the display is very nice and readable. It's clear, it's easy to see. And of course it does have a backlight. I'm not sure if you'll see it under this light. Yes, you can see it very clearly. A very nice, bright, uniform backlight, um, which does help in dark environments when you're doing measurements, etc. One thing I do notice, uh, okay, it's just showing auto down here, but if you push it, it shows hold until the light actually changes. So it is a second function of the hold button. And yeah, not too shabby. Now let's just quickly take a look at measurements on this. Uh, let's just put it to the side over here. Go out a little bit. And then we're going to do some voltage measurements. Um, I'm going to compare it to one of my well calibrated meters. Um, well, actually, I will take the Unity, which has been shown to be pretty accurate uh, of late. Uh, with some of the work that I've been doing, it has been pretty good. So we're going to check it out and see how it stacks up. Now, first thing I need to do is get a set of leads plugged in for reference readings. Um, the easiest is probably going to be if I plug in an extra set of clips and just run it like that for now. And there we go. I'm just hooking it up. I won't be too long. Right, so we've got our meter connected up to our reference DC supply. First thing is first, we need to power on the reference. Okay, let's take it down to zero. And then we'll do some testing just to compare the two and see how it stacks up. I do apologize for that little bit of a delay, but here we go. Okay, so let's get that onto volts DC. And you can see we've now got 0 0.0014 and this one is showing 0013 millivolts. Okay, so yeah, it's showing me 1.3 millivolts, 1.5 millivolts, much of a much. Let's just take this thing up to around 2 volts or thereabout. So we got 2.037, 2.038 showing here, 2.025, a little bit lower. Let's go up to around 5, 
see how close I can get it to 5. Okay, 5.004, 5 5.001, 4.99, 4.99, 4.99, 4.99. Showing low again, but within spec, I'm taking it to around 12 volts. Well, 12.122, 12.120, 12 12.05 again, reading low. And it does seem to be getting a little bit more, but we'll see. Let's go up to around 20. Okay, we've got 20.289, 20.303, to up to 9. Wait for it to settle. 290, 20.2. Okay, my reference is 2290, and this is 2290, and this is 2170. So we're talking about quite a substantial difference of 20 volts between the two. Um, again, electrician's meter, probably not the end of the world, but it is showing quite a big difference. Um, when we're talking 100 millivolts, give or take, um, which is quite substantial. So yeah, that is there and it's something to just take note of. So the DC test results are there. You can decide for yourself how accurate you want out of your meter. I'm a little disappointed. I did expect it to be a little bit better than that. But in so saying, it's not a terrible result for an electrician's meter, to be honest with you. Um, it's well, I think, within the spec that they claim. Um, but we'll see. But now, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the continuity buzzer on this meter. And a few of the other little bits and bobs and see how it performs. So we're going to go across to the ohm scale. We're going to go to mode, continuity. I'm not going to use any probes, just carry on with this. It's very slow. You literally have to Just probably a half a second it needs to be on there for it to contact, but it does sound like a latching meter, which is good. Good for testing, etc. Not bad. I mean, not the best leads to be using, but it does give us a good indication of what's going on. So, like, you know what, for what it is, I would say it's a fantastic little meter. Um, it sells in South Africa for around 1,400 Rand. I purchased this one on a 45% off special just to check it out. But something of note, which might be of interest to somebody, it has a torch. But now I notice that meter has to be switched on in order for this torch to work, this LED torch. And it is pretty bright, I must say. It does show up. I mean, I've got some pretty bright lighting on this workbench and you can see that light Pretty clearly it is quite spot, but again, if you're in a dark environment, it's definitely going to help you out, so good one. The min-max function, I'm expecting it to be pretty much the norm, where it'll do a uh, maximum, minimum, no averaging, so okay, a basic min-max function, and of course IP67 waterproof. As for how waterproof it is, I couldn't answer that unless... Uh, like our fellow enthusiast um, and designer in Australia, you decide to take it down a waterfall with you. But in so saying, not a bad meter, it feels nice, it's easy to grip, and I do like the fact that you can probably throw your leads on here and use it as a probe while you measure with your second hand. So that's quite nice, um, probably not the safest option, but nice to say the least. And uh, yeah, you can get your work done, probe that onto your negative, you've got your red lead for your positive, and off you go. Good one, Major Tech. So anybody looking for something a little bit different or something new to try from Major Tech or any other Major Tech fans out there, this MT25, um, it claims your 25 year special edition. I don't know if they're going to mass produce it or if it's just a couple of them that have been brought in or what, but really fantastic little meter for what it costs. So thanks for watching everybody and until next time, take care.